Hello and welcome to our section talking about standards of measurement. It should be review for everyone, but uh, let's go through it anyway. We're looking at the International System of Measurement, SI units. What does that mean anyway? Um, in 1960, this system was uh, set up, and the reason it's called SI is it's taken from French um, for Le Système International d'Unit. So the, the letters are flipped around a little bit. It is The SI standards are universally accepted and understood by scientists throughout the world. They are the standard units of measure. Um, these are the uh, base units. And the base units are the units um, that are uh, basically they form the base of all SI units. All other SI units are obtained from these base units. And um, an example, well, let's look at the meter. How do we get a meter? Um, the standard meter equals the exact distance that light travels through a vacuum in a very specific fraction of a second uh, amount of time. And that is measured, um, and that is equal to a meter. Um, the, it, this actually is a kilogram would be the base unit rather than gram. Liter for volume, second for time, Kelvin, amperes, moles, and uh, candela. Those are all uh, the base units for the SI system. Now the thing that makes SI units so wonderful and so easy to work with is that they are based on multiples of 10. Uh, SI units are not more precise than English units, but they are a lot easier to work with. Um, first, we are going to look at com some conversions within the SI units, and we're going to look at them in two different ways. Um, I'm going to show you uh, the first way. First of all, uh, these are the different prefixes in the SI units. Uh, kilo if we look at that, is basically a multiplying factor of 100 over the base unit. Excuse me, times 1,000, not 100. So if we look at our base unit of a meter, say, a kilometer would be 1,000 of those. Likewise, the prefix milla is 0 0.001, or 1,000 of these is going to equal the base unit. Um, 100 of these will equal the base unit. 10 of these equals our base unit. This is the base unit multiplied by 10. This is the base unit multiplied by 100. The ones that we're most familiar with and are going to be using will be these. But I simply wrote, if you know that 1,000 millimeters here are in one meter, you also know that 1,000 meters are in one kilometer. 1,000 of these make a kilometer. Uh, you also know that 10 millimeters are in 1 centimeter. 10 of these make 1 centimeter. And 100 centimeters make 1 meter. I just rewrote those right here. These are all your different conversion units. So let's say we would like to convert 2 millimeters into centimeters. We start with what we know, and that is 2 millimeters. 2 millimeters is the same as 2 millimeters divided by 1. We are going to multiply this 2 millimeters by 1. Remember, if my numerator and my denominator are equal to each other, that whole uh, term equals 1. And if I multiply anything by the number 1, I get its identity back, right? The same thing. This equals 1 because my numerator is equal to my denominator. 1 centimeter equals 10 millimeters. This is called my conversion factor, okay? I simply took some of these equivalence statements up here and turned it in to an equivalence factor and I'm going to multiply uh, my two millimeters by it. Why did I put the 10 millimeters on the bottom instead of on the top? I did that so that my units of millimeters would cancel out. If I have the same thing on the top and on the bottom, I can cancel them. So now I am left with two millimeters times one centimeter and on the bottom I have one times 10 millimeters. And once again, here my millimeters cancel out. The only units I'm left with now are centimeters. I can multiply 2 by 1, 
And then I can take that and divide it by 10. That gives me 0.2 centimeters. That's called dimensional analysis. You've probably done it before, whether you knew you were doing it or not, I'm not sure, but it's a very important tool and skill that you definitely need to know uh, working with um, units and uh, really equations in math and in science. Let's try using this uh, method of dimensional analysis to look at a problem with mass. And when I have mass, here's, here are all of my prefixes for mass. We know mass is in grams. I know that 1,000 milligrams is going to equal 1 gram. I know 1,000 grams equals 1 kilogram. I wrote those conversion factors right there for you. Now convert 75 kilograms into grams. We start with what we know. We write down 75 kilograms. That's the same. Just to let you write it down so it makes sense to your brain, it's the same as 75 kilograms over 1 divided by 1. We're going to multiply by our conversion factor which is going to be 1,000 grams equals a kilogram. We want to put the kilograms on the bottom so that the units will cancel out. I can rewrite that. I get 75,000 grams. That's the only unit left. So you try. Convert 600 centimeters into millimeters. Pause the video and do it on your own. So here's the answer to that problem that you just did on your own. We have uh, the problem set up right here. And there's our answer, 6,000 millimeters. Um, one more example. Let's suppose you have a rectangular area measuring 10 meters by 20 meters. What is the area in millimeters squared? Sounds like a hard problem, but it really isn't. We're just going to use a lot of dimensional analysis. We have a rectangular area and it's 10 meters by 20 meters. So let's, we write that down, 10 meters times 20 meters. I know that um, I would like to convert these meters into millimeters because I'm going to want to find millimeters squared in the end. So in order to do that, I can use dimensional analysis. I know that one meter equals 1,000 millimeters. I put my meters on the bottom, and if I do that, these meters cancel. This and do it again, these meters cancel. I'm left with millimeters times millimeters. And when I multiply all this out, I'm saying 10 times 20 times 1,000 times 1,000 millimeters times millimeters. Gives me this number, millimeters squared. Millimeters squared is another way of saying millimeters times millimeters. On the bottom, I'm just saying 1 times 1 times 1. Not very interesting, so uh, this would be my answer. This is the exact same process that you would use for converting between SI units and English units. It's a pain. It's so awful, and we hate to do it in science, but sometimes that happens, um, and we need to convert English to metric or metric to English. Usually we want to convert English to metric because we really don't want to have to work with English units. Um, here are some conversion units. One meter equals 1.094 yards. Um, here's centimeters and inches. Here's in mass, kilograms and pounds. Let's do a little example of dimensional analysis using something other than the SI units. Let's look at dozen. You know that one dozen equals 12 donuts. We're not going to do a baker's dozen. We're just going to do a pure dozen. Let's say we have a problem. We have two dozen donuts. How many individual donuts do we have? So here are some units of measurement, dozen. That is, it's not a nice little uh, powers of 10 uh, kind of SI unit. How would we, now you know the answer in your head already, I know, but how would you use dimensional analysis to find the answer? Well, we start with what we know. We know we have two dozen donuts. We're going to multiply that by the conversion factor. Remember, two dozen is the same as two dozen divided by one. It's the same thing. We're going to multiply it by our conversion factor. We know that one dozen equals 12 donuts. Are we going to put the dozen on the bottom or the top? We're going to put it on the bottom because we want dozen to cancel out. 
We now have our nice problem where we have 2 times 12, gives us 24, donuts. That's all we have left for units. And one's on the bottom, so 24 donuts is our answer. So let's try this using something other than donuts and dozens. How about 2.85 centimeters? How many inches is that? Well, first of all, I would have to give you the conversion factor because I certainly don't know that on the top, off the top of my head. The conversion factor or the equivalent statement is 2.54 centimeters equal, is equal to 1 inch. So if I give you that, you should be able to solve this by dimensional analysis. Let's do that. 2.85 centimeters. Start with what we know. We know that. We're going to multiply it by the conversion factor. Do we put centimeters on the bottom or the top? Put it on the bottom because we want the centimeters to cancel out. That ends up giving us 1.12, and the only unit we have left is inches, and that's exactly what we wanted to know. Note, units cancel just like numbers do. Obviously, we've been doing that. Always check to make sure your answer actually makes sense, and you do not need to worry about this because you are not doing sig figs right now. So remember, I promised you a second way of converting in SI units. And you cannot do this when you're converting between SI and English. If you're converting between those two, you're going to need to use dimensional analysis. But if you're just converting from, say, millimeters to meters or uh, kilograms to grams, you can simply use a very simple method, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. Um, you know the, these milla, these are the smaller units over on this side. Kila are the large units. Remember, running a 10-kilometer race is not the same as running a 10-millimeter race, is it? No, the millimeters are little. The, the unit themselves is little. It would take many, 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 many millimeters to equal a kilometer. So keep that in mind. Uh, next, you, you always look at the base unit, whether it's meters, liters, or grams. You can convert by looking at how many powers of 10 that you are traveling between one unit and the next. So let's look at some examples of this. Let's take my problem. Let's say I have one uh, kilometer. And I want to know how many centimeters is that? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one kilometer, 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 and I'm going to move my decimal point. I know one is the same as one with a decimal point right after it. I'm going to move my decimal point one place, two places, three, four, five places. Each of these is a power of ten. So I'm going to move it five places to the right. And when I do that, one, two, three, four, five. I need to put zeros in there for placeholders. This is the number I get. One kilometer equals 100,000 centimeters. I can substitute liters for meters. I can substitute grams for meters, and it works the same way. Uh, if I want to do the reverse, let's say I have one, one centimeter and I want to know how many kilometers it is. I would do the opposite. I would look at, I would start out at centimeters, and I'm going to go to the left. One, two, three, four, five places. So here's my one centimeter, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five places. Move the decimal point. I'm going to fill all these spaces in with zeros, and it's going to be 0 .00001 kilometers. And that is one way, just by moving the decimal, that I can easily and quickly convert within SI units. Don't worry about this right now. Uh, it's using some scientific notation that we're not going to worry about. Advanced ideas. How about a, a little more complicated problem? If we drive 55 miles per hour for 35 minutes, how many kilometers have we traveled? It's a little more complicated. Use these conversion units right there. Make up your own more complicated problem. Uh, that's a, an excellent way to do things. Look into scientific notation and significant figures. I, those aren't going to be required content, but those are some things that you can look at 
and explain what the little rules are for those. Uh, those are useful concepts in science, and uh, come in and tell me about those for some advanced proficiency. Look forward to seeing you in class.